Our Posada's in the house. How you doing there, Robert? <clears throat> nice to have you in the chat this morning. <clears throat> First in the chat. Oh, you mean it's... I, I didn't know they had a 20-minute commercial that they sometimes put on. That that was kind of interesting when Paul D. put that up there. I'm like, well, that's good for me. If people want to watch the 20-minute commercial, that would mean I'd get some view time for the, the commercials on my channel. But down the road, I know everything will work out in the end. Sports lines in the house. How you doing there, sports line and crew? I'm... Pretty sure it's probably you and your crew there hanging out. Appreciate you coming in and being, uh, making it in, into the live here. There we go. I try and do that. Teacher's bot. Hello. This is English teacher in France. How you doing there, teacher's bot? I think she might be still alive. She said she was going to stop by and say hi. I will leave you running for now. Okay, thank you there, Teacher's Bot. Um, that's a, a newfound friend in France, English teacher in France. She's a Filipina that is in France and teaching English. Uh, appreciate you being here. I don't know if I would so much sub her bot, but she might make an appearance when she's done with her live stream. <clears throat> if, if by chance I'm into my content that I start at 10.30... Um, do me a favor and just greet her if she does show up. Um, that's her, her robot right now. I think it can sense. I think uh, I got to learn more about how these these robots work that you can use to help you out in the channel. Um, but appreciate that. Yeah, so if she shows up and it's not her bot, uh, I think you can use the different bots for different reasons on your channel. I think that helps out when you do have a lot of people in your streams. So, gave you a shout out on my Instagram, Donald. The crew said hello. Thanks, everybody there in Sportsline crew. Appreciate you guys uh, visiting and watching me and uh, just being here in the chat. That's, that's enough for me. We do have five. I did go on about 10 minutes early. Just wanted to chit chat and talk. We are having our Hall of Fame Friday inductee video series which will include uh, Warren Giles, Willie Mays, and Hack Wilson. Okay, so those are our Hall of Famers we're going to be going over for the 1979 inductees video series. All right. <clears throat> so other than that, I think we're doing well here. <laughs> Hello, teachers. Teachers bot. Yeah, that's a that's a robot from uh, uh, you can see in her, in the second one on there. It says this is English teacher in France. So if if English teacher in France shows up in the channel, that's the actual uh, uh, content creator for her channel. That's just her her robot, I think. That's checking in to say hello. Um, she did mention that she would try and jump into the stream later. Uh, but yes, I do appreciate that. And Teacher's Bot, I don't know if you can uh, hear the words here, but tell uh, English teacher in France that we did see the the robot come into the into the live stream. I don't know if you get credit for the, the robot being here or not. <laughs> but that is interesting. Can't wait to hear this great history. Yes, of course, Warren Crandall Giles is an executive. Of course, I think everybody knows Willie Mays. Everybody knows Willie Mays. <clears throat> and then, of course, Hack Wilson. And then to top things off, in honor of Kevin's card collecting and more, we are going to open up this uh, Fairfield box, 100 baseball cards, plus one pack. Of course, yesterday we did get an autograph, so that was really cool. So we did get a hit that was an auto, so that made it good yesterday i think this might be a leaf product in here i'm try. i can't remember for sure what year that is but i'm pretty sure that is a leaf pack of cards because you do get a you get 100 baseball cards plus one pack of cards so we will see what that is when we do get to the fairfield box 
So and we've got about five minutes. We can hang out and chat in the channel. Let me, um, in honor of just being different and in honor of, I think, uh, Kevin making his resurgent with coming back live. He's been sick for the last week or so. Let me turn the camera around real quick and I'll show you I've got uh, a different Hall of Fame shirt on right now. Let me straighten up my hat there. Everybody can see that I've got my Griffey Hall of Fame inductee hat on along with, are you ready for this? This is a new t-shirt. I couldn't get quite the size I wanted. I'm sorry my eyes look so big there. Just wanted to show you the top of the cap. But um, yes, this is a National Baseball Hall of Fame 2016 induction, Cooperstown. Of course, that's when Griffey and Piazza made it into the Hall of Fame. It was just those two that year. So that is uh, my new t-shirt. It's a little bit tighter because it's a medium. Eventually when I lose more weight, I think it'll fit me better. That's the plan at least. But uh, just wanted to just uh, point that out to you just so you did know which shirt and different items I do have on today for this Hall of Fame inductee video series. I'm going to readjust that just so you can see the the top of my brake mat there and get it kind of centered right about there um, there we go get that on my name there for the brake mat while we open the carts so just get that all set up there um, nice hall of fame t-shirt yeah i found this one and i was like well that's the only size I could find to that year because back in the day I was a Griffey fan in 2016. Uh, have been for a long time. And that's one of my uh, projects is to get my Griffey uh, collection organized. That's going to be a task in itself with as many Ken Griffey Jr. cards as I have. But um, that is one of the processes, processes that I'm going to work on, that's for sure. But until then... Uh, when I do get that in place, I'll probably have to do a video series on that. Uh, going through Ken Griffey Jr.'s cards that I have in my collection. That would be an awesome type thing to actually watch, which would be good there. Um, I don't know for sure why. Looks like, is my internet getting a little bit choppy? Of course, don't have to worry about it getting too choppy, but... Uh, so that is what we do have. So we're going to go over these three in just about two minutes here. We'll get ready to go over the three Hall of Famers here. And we will do that. Um, it's good over here. Okay. Just wanted to make sure because uh, when, when you are on uh, uh, Streamlabs on your phone, it tells you your frames per second. And it has dropped down to about two, but it's averaging, yeah, right now it's down to three frames per second. So something is probably tying up the, the video feed, possibly, and making it choppy. But I should, yeah, my, my signal keeps going up and down, up and down. Um, I don't think I have anything else running on my computer that I can tell. Um, let me just check and make sure. Nope, that is fine. Just before we do get started in about one minute here. All right, that's looking, I'm just making sure I don't have one of my tabs that are is running a video for some reason. I don't think so, but let me just pan through here and check things out. Uh, let's see, that can close. And I do have, so far, I've got one, two, three, four, five packages to open up for my family mail call tomorrow. So family mail car call is filling up. I know uh, Kevin's probably really behind in his. Kevin, hey, Donald, hey, everyone. Kevin's card collecting's in the house. As you can see, Kevin, uh, after we're done the the bio, uh, the the Hall of Fame inductee series here. I'm going to have a Fairfield Friday in honor of your return tonight uh, or this afternoon. Um, do you have any idea when you're going to do your 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 live stream? 
Or are you still going to be able to do it? Just kind of curious before we get into our content at hand here. Um, let's see. Dun, dun, dun. All right, there we go. All right, I've got the content set up. I see it. Looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, so yes, I'm looking forward to hopefully being on your live stream later this afternoon. Um, do you have any idea what time you're going to do your live stream? I know it's dependent on when you get home from work, probably. But just kind of curious on that. And if you can help me out, if you are able to, Kevin, um, I'm waiting for somebody to maybe show up. It's a English teacher in France. She said she's going to try stop by after she finishes her live stream and maybe visit the channel. But if she doesn't, that's fine. Uh, she's just a new person I've connected up with, uh, kind of the, the, what I call the Filipino connection. <laughs> One of these days I'll, I'll introduce her to my wife and my wife's channel, even though my wife is not creating content yet so that she can kind of hook up with her maybe, and at least, uh, subscribe to my wife's channel. But, um, other than that, it is 1032 and I'm going to get into, uh, I see her in the chat up above. Yeah, but that's just her robot. I guess I guess you can send a robot into somebody's chat. But I think she maybe between her live stream, she's uh, doing something, but she said she was going to try and check in. But if not, that's fine. All right. So without further ado, we are going to get into our Hall of Fame induction series. All right. <laughs> All right, so we are going to do uh, w Warren Giles, Willie Mays, and Hack Wilson. And then when we're done with the three Hall of Fame inductees for 1979, we will be opening up this Fairfield box right here and see if we can get a hit. Uh, I don't know if you watched the video yesterday, Kevin, but I did open... Uh, it was either yesterday or the day before, I think. I did open up a Fairfield box, and we did get an autograph in there. So we'll see how we do in this one. All right. So without further ado, we will get into our first Hall of Famer. Let me know if uh, if um, Sally shows up, because this is her least favorite card. But if she does, tell her I apologize. But I did not have a baseball card for Warren Grandel Giles. All right. Warren Randall Giles. Uh, all right. So Warren Randall Giles was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1979. His primary team was the Cincinnati Reds. However, he was an executive. So baseball must always keep pace with the times. Warren Giles said upon retiring after 18 years as National League president. <clears throat> Although he respected tradition, Giles refused to be bound by old practices, leading the National League from 1952 to 1969. Giles oversaw one of the most significant and dynamic eras in league history. Giles' path to the elite ranks in baseball began as an owner of a small team in Moline, Illinois. In November 1919, Giles was asked by Moline's community leaders to take over the town's struggling triple, uh, triple I League baseball team. Though he already had a job as a painter, Giles agreed to run the club for no pay. Giles hired the son of Hall of Famer manager Connie Mack, Earl, to manage the team, saying, I had long been an admirer of old Connie, so I thought I could, couldn't could go wrong by engaging his son. Together, Giles and Mac led Moline from worst to first in the span of two seasons. Over the next few years, Giles ran a minor league team in St. Joseph, Missouri, and worked as a college football referee until a call from the Hall of Fame executive, Branch Rickey, that changed his life. In 1925, Ricky hired Giles as general manager of the Double A Syracuse Stars, where he would serve for two years before being promoted to run the Triple A Rochester Red Wings. Giles helped develop several stars in Rochester that would go on to star in the Grasshouse Gang for Ricky's St. Louis Cardinals, including Ripper Collins. 
and Pepper Martin. Meanwhile, Giles is a acumen as a front office leader continued to grow. By 1936, he was acting president of the International League. At the conclusion of the 1936 season, Giles received his call to the big leagues when he was tapped to replace Hall of Fame executive Larry McPhail as the Cincinnati Reds' general manager. I met Reds owner Powell Crosley at an All-Star game in 1935. Giles later recalled, He was familiar, of course, with our winning record at Rochester. We seemed to hit it off immediately, and the following year when he was looking for a successor to Larry McVale, he thought of me. Though he inherited a team that would finish last in 1937, Giles immediately set to work in turning the Reds' fortune around. In 1938, Giles hired future Hall of Famer manager Bill McKinney and acquired future All-Stars Lonnie Frey and Buck Walters via trade. Cincinnati won 82 games that season and the Sporting News named Giles its Executive of the Year. In 1939, Walters won the National League Most Valuable Player Award and combined with right-hander Paul Derringer to form the league's most dominant pitching tandem, led by their star hurlers. The Reds won the 1939 pennant and followed up with a World Series championship in 1940, and France's first in 21 years. Giles remained with the Reds for another 11 seasons, eventually becoming team president in 1947. Four years later, Giles was in contention along with National League president Ford Frick to succeed Happy Chandler as commissioner of baseball. When a stalemate rose in the owner's vote, Giles stepped aside and offered the position to Frick. My first interest in baseball is the welfare of baseball itself, told Giles told his fellow owners. As Frick assumed the commissioner's office, Giles replaced him as National League president. With Giles in charge, the senior circuit enjoyed a prolonged period of success, thanks in part to its president President's progressive policies. The National League admitted more top flight African American players than its counterpart, American League, during the 1950s, and soon realized an obvious advantage in talent. During Giles's reign from 1951 to 1969, the National League won 16 of 22 All Star games and 10 of the 18 World Series. Giles also oversaw an unprecedented period of relocating and expansion of National League teams during his tenure. He facilitated two separate moves of the Braves, from Boston to Milwaukee in 1953, then later to Atlanta in 1966, as well as the migration of both the Dodgers and the Giants to California in 1957. In 1962, Giles' National League invited expansion teams in Queens, the Mets, and Texas, the Colt 45s, further expanding Major League Baseball's influence in every corner of America. Giles' final year in office, 1969, saw his league cross the border into Canada with the founding of the Montreal Expos. That season, Giles also approved the creation of divisional play in the first National League Championship Series. While Giles has done a magnificent job of building up the National League, said Charlie Chubb Feeney, who succeeded Giles as National League president, I will be well satisfied if I can do two-thirds as good a job In my tenure, the National League is having its high point of the cycle. Giles announced his retirement at age 73 in December of 1969, but his impact is still recognized today. The NLCS trophy is named in Giles' honor, as well as an award annually given to an outstanding minor league president. In 1979, the year of his death, Giles was elected to the Hall of Fame. The easiest way to kill interest in baseball is to make it fancy.
a dressy sport. Baseball prospers in an atmosphere of relaxation, a picnic type of background, said Warren Giles. All right, so there we have it, folks. Uh, Warren, Gile, Warren Crandall Giles, the first inductee of 1979. Okay, so we'll move him back here. Next up to bat is Willie Mays. Willie Mays is next up to bat here. This is an older card I do have. This is probably my oldest card I have of Willie Mays. It's not that old, though. It's 1982. So it's just like a, a special uh, total games, at-bats, runs, hits, home, uh, batting average for his career, his home runs, and his RBIs. But I thought that was a, a nice, sharp-looking one, and it's got a smile on there. I know uh, Sally, when she shows up, uh, she likes those types of cards. Three card collectors is in the house. How you doing, everybody? Nice to have you here. So we are going to move on to now the uh, Willie Mays, the second inductee for 1979. So without further ado, I don't think I missed anything in the chat then. Uh, okay, 2 o'clock. Sounds good, Kevin. I will be sure I'm there. Um, I see, uh, da, da, da. okay, so two o'clock, okay, the day before, yeah, I saw it was a good box, <laughs> all right, so Willie Mays, Willie Howard Mays Jr., oh, well, I always knew it was Willie Mays, but I didn't know he was a junior also, I don't think his dad played ball, though, that I'm aware of. So if somebody came up, oh, and the, of course his primary team was the San Francisco Giants and he was a center fielder. So if somebody came up and hit 450 and stole 100 bases and performed a miracle in the field every day, I'd still look you in the eye and say Willie was better. He could do the five things you have to do to be a superstar. Hit, hit with power, run, throw and field and he had that other magic ingredient that turns a superstar into a superstar he lit up the room he was a joy to be around said hall of famer leo derosher of willie mays at age 16 mays joined the birmingham barons of the negro american league the New York Giants purchased his contract in 1950, and he was in center field at the polo ground soon thereafter. Mays started off slowly, but got untracked and won the National League Rookie of the Year award, helping the Giants erase a 13-game deficit to tie the Dodgers at the end of the 1951 season. Sally Lloyd is in the house. There's Dearman, 2019. All right, so Sally is in the house. Sorry you missed this part, Sally, but he does have a little smile on his face. That was an executive, Warren Giles. That's why I didn't have a baseball card on him. We're on our second of three Hall of Famers. We're doing Willie Mays right now. <clears throat> All right, but thanks for hopping in here, guys. Do appreciate that. All right, so he spent most of his... nineteen fifty two and all of nineteen fifty three in the army. Oh, May started off slowly but got untracked and won the National League Rookie of the Year Award, helping the Giants erase a thirteen game deficit to tie the Dodgers at the end of the regular fifty one seasons. Sorry, I, I knew I hadn't finished that paragraph yet when I looked over, I think. He spent most of 1952 and all of 1953 in the Army, but in 1954 showed his all-round ability, leading the league with a 345 batting average and 13 triples, while blasting 41 home homers and ringing up 110 rum, runs. 
Um, the Giants, again, won the pennant in the World Series, faced the Cleveland Indians, winner of the American League record, 111 games, with Game 1 tied 2-2 in the top of the 8th. Runners on 1st and 2nd and no outs. Vic Wirtz hit a towering drive that would have been a home run in most parks. Mays, playing shallow, took off and ran with his back to the ball. Caught it over the shoulder, an estimated 460 feet from the plate. Turned and fired Larry Doby, who had to turn back and tag up at second. Base was forced to stop at third. The Giants went on to win the game and sweep the series. The catch is considered by many to be the greatest defensive play ever. So Mays played in 21 seasons with the Giants and finished up with the Mets in 1972 and 1973. He hit over 310 times en route to a career 302 mark. He was a two-time National League MVP in 1954 and 1965. Mill City Wax. Mill City Wax. Thanks for hopping in here, Steve. It's nice to have you join in the stream today. Appreciate you stopping by. I've been waiting for a couple of days to see if you would try and make it by. Jay's Better Room. Hello. How are you doing today? Somebody new in the channel? Check out these new channel guys and gals. Make sure you welcome them to the stream. Appreciate them too showing up and being here. Um, so he... And he's a 20-time All-Star. He led the league in home runs four times, finishing with 660, then the, the second most ever in baseball. They invented the All-Star game for Willie Mays, said Ted Williams back in the day when he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. So as far as uh, Willie Mays' uh, career stats and career at a glance, he played in 2,992 games. He had 10,881 at-bats, 2,062 runs, uh, 3,283 hits, 523 doubles, 140 triples, um, 660 home runs, 1,903 runs batted in, 338 stolen bases, 1,464 walks, a batting average of 302, an OPS of 941, an on-base percentage of 384, and a slugging percentage of 557. So as far as his baseball playing career, he played for the Birmingham Black Barons in 1948 through 1950. Then, of course, he, is, he spent most of his career with the Giants uh, when they were the New York Giants in 51 through 57, and then the San Francisco Giants from 1958 to 1972. And then when he ended his career, he did end it with the New York Mets uh, in 1972 to 1973. So that they did not have much of a Hall of Fame induction right up on him, but I think it would only be doing justice if I do Willie Mays as a player biography because of the awesome player that he was. So look forward to me doing Willie Mays in one of my player biography uh, live streams in the near future. Okay, so just wanted to throw that out there for you. And we're going to get ready to move on to our third Hall of Famer. For the 1979 Hall of Fame induction series. So our third and final Hall of Fame Famer is Hack Wilson. Hack Wilson is our third and final Hall of Famer for the 1979 Hall of Fame induction video series. For those that are new in the channel, I do have a uh, I do a series on Hall of Fame inductions, and we started back last year when I started with 2019. Of course, since I have added uh, uh, 2020 into the mix also, but we continue, we're going back in time. So next week's Hall of Fame induction will be the 1978 induction series. 
in case you're wondering what I do with this live stream video series. Okay, I do a lot of his history type behind uh, player biographies, um, team histories, um, so different things of that nature. Hall of Fame Friday. All right, so I do have my video series. Um, I go through Topps baseball card sets. That's another one of my video series that I do on Wednesdays. But if you go to my homepage, click on my About Me tab, it explains my whole schedule in there. All right. I do live streams from Tuesday through Saturday each week. Sunday and Mondays is kind of my weekend off, but sometimes when I do have time, I might throw in a bonus live stream on one of those days. Um, but that is a, a church day for me on Sunday, and then Mondays is my days that uh, my wife has off from work, so we usually do something that day together as husband and wife. But yeah, i got to make sure I balance my 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 card channel, my biblical reading channel, and everything to, to balance it out with uh, wife and family time also. Uh, sometimes we can get mixed up in doing things that uh, we do, and this is my uh, retirement that I am working on here, but it is fun. Teacher's bot says they're still here. <laughs> I just caught that. So without further ado, let's get into Hack Wilson's Hall of Fame induction information here. So Hack Wilson, Lewis Robert Wilson is his full name, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1979. His primary team is the Chicago Cubs, and his primary position is center fielder. So Lewis R. Hack Wilson played in Major League Baseball for 12 seasons, finishing his career with a lifetime 307 average, 244 home runs, and 1,063 RBIs. Though his tenure in baseball was relatively short, he hit the ball well enough to be remembered. He captured four home run titles during his time with the Chicago Cubs. In 1929, he finished third in the league with 39, and he was just getting started. One year later, he had his best season and one of the greatest in Major League history, launching 56 long balls, a National League record that stood for 68 years. He also notched 191 RBIs, still the all-time major league record with 356 batting, av batting average. In his season of highlights, he also had a 723 slugging percentage, and he walked 105 times. His RBI record actually stood at 190 until later research found a run that had been attributed attributed to Charlie Grimm actually belonged to Wilson, changing that record to 191. Wilson's RBI total puts him ahead of uh, fellow Hall of Famers uh, Lou Gehrig, who had 184, Hank Greenberg with 183, and Jamie Foxx, who had 175. No player has gotten within 25 RBIs of his mark since 1938. Wilson also reached his mark in 1930 without ever hitting a grand slam and is understood to be one of the most unreachable numbers in baseball history. Wilson drove in more than 100 runs in six of his 12 seasons and though he is not widely remembered for his home run records, he led the league for three consecutive seasons. Though hitting 56 home runs in a season isn't as rare now as it once was, for more than 120 years from 19 or from 1876 until 1998, no National League outside of Wilson was able to do it. The center fielder had both 25 and 27 game hitting streaks in his career. And he once hit for the cycle. In 1927, he led the league's outfielders with 400 putouts. Wilson lived the life of a popular athlete and made one of baseball's highest salaries during the years of the Depression. Though he was a very talented player, the outfielder wanted, to, wanted people to know that more than just talent was necessary in life in order to find success. There are many kids in and out of baseball who think that just because they have some natural talent, 
they have the world by the tail. Wilson said, it isn't so. In life, you need money more than things besides talent. Things like good advice and common sense. So Hack didn't look much like a ball player. He was stocky and muscular, looked like a fire plug, very strong. In fact, he was nicknamed after Hack and Schmidt, the wrestler, said Clyde Suckforth. So as far as his career stats and career at a glance, he did not have a stellar long season, but was noted for those uh, feats that he did uh, achieve during his shorter career. He did play in 1,348 games. He had 4,660 at-bats, 884 runs scored, 1,461 hits, 266 doubles, 67 triples, 244 home runs, 1,063 RBIs, 52 stolen bases, 674 walks, a batting average of 307, an OPS of 940, an on-base percentage of 395, and a slugging percentage of 545. And he did play for four different uh, teams during his tenure in baseball. He played for the New York Giants from 1923 to 1925, the Chicago Cubs from 1926 to 1931, the Brooklyn Dodgers from 1932 to 1934, and the Philadelphia Phillies in 1934. So there we have it, our third and final inductee for the 1979 induction into the Baseball's Hall of Fame. So hopefully you guys and gals enjoyed that. I appreciate everybody that is here watching for the live stream. And now I'm going to get ready to uh, get into our next section here. Let's see. Looks like people are just talking to each other in the chat. Um, I can't live with that one. Oh, I can live with that one. He's a smiler. Yes, Warren Giles was a smiler, so it doesn't have to look like a tombstone there, there, Sally. I know that's the way you are, <laughs> but appreciate that. Um, let's see. Who else we got in here? Mill City Wax said hello. Jay Betta's room said hello. Um, Art Posada saying hello to everybody. Uh, pleasure's all mine. Um, teacher's bot. Okay, so Teacher's Bot is still here. I'm going to go ahead and remove the, the the Hall of Fame cards here now. We'll leave these stands here in case we get some hits out of the box here. Usually we don't have too much that's earth-shaking and earth-breaking when we open up a Fairfield, but sometimes you never do know. All right, that's why we like to open up these odd boxes once in a while here. Just going to get these positioned in case we do get something. So, again, this is honor uh, in honor of Kevin's cart collecting here. Thank you for sharing that great history. No problem there. Robert, appreciate you being here. Appreciate Steve from uh, Mill City Wax being here, joining with us. Um, we got Jay's Better Room. I'm almost, oh, Jay, Jay's Better Room, yeah. The fish aquariums. The videos with the fish aquariums. Yes, I do subscribe to various different... Oh, forgot to show you the data on this box so you know which one. So this one here... Oh, manufacturer date. I think this one is an older one. Or at least the box is probably. We'll see if we get any older. It looks like this one is July of 2017. Uh, Mill City Wax. Bought about eight fair fail boxes. I think I got four, four. Well, out of eight boxes, four is not bad. Because just kind of remember, too, they do put on the odds on there, one out of four contain a hit. So if you bought eight Fairfield boxes and got four autographs, that's doing pretty good, considering they only guarantee one out of four jumbo boxes get a hit. So that makes it one out of two, which is pretty good odds. That is pretty good. But yeah, we do get a lot of junk wax era in here. 
Um, but we will see what we pull out of this box. I'm going to just set these here. All right, and we'll go through the first half. We'll go open up the pack, the baseball pack. And then we will see what happens from there. I do like to put the box back on display here so you can see that we're opening up the Fairfield box here. All right, so we will move these out of the way. And it looks like this is... Um, Let's see. Oh, okay. It's the Leaf Set 1991 featuring Harmon Killebrew. Okay. So we have uh, 15 baseball cards and a, a, a puzzle piece card in there. We will get to that when we do that. But let's go through the first one here and see who we find. See if we can find some Hall of Famers or anything what I class as hits in my separation. Well, we'll see what we do have here. So Jared Weaver. Jared Weaver. All right, with the California Angels. All right, get that out of the way of my, so I can make sure I'm centered properly here. All right, let me see what year are these cards. 2014. So this could be an older Fairfield box. We'll see if we get any, find any newer cards in here. All right. So Jared Weaver. All right. Get the glare off the cards when I... Uh, show them to you here. Logan Morrison with the Miami Marlins. All right. Nate McClough with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Shout out to Eric and John Jabs. Oh, there we go. Uh, All-Star Game, Washington, D.C., 2018. See? So this was produced in 2017, the box. But we got a 2018 card here. Jacob Junis with the Kansas City Royals. Look on the back here, and it says 2018. So sometimes they just use their boxes. Why, why get rid of the Fairfield boxes if they haven't filled them all or used them all? That's, I think, mainly just showing when the box was produced. Okay. So Josh Thole with the New York Mets. All right. Getting some similar cards here. We'll see if uh, Kevin, what he noticed, is getting the, the double cards, back-to-back -back double cards. Uh, Jamile Weeks with the Oakland Athletics. All right. We've got... All right. Uh, Brian Ricard with the Colorado Rockies. Bowman. All right. Here we've got an uh, Ernie Witt. 1990 Upper Deck with the Toronto Blue Jays. There we go. A Tops. Brian Downing on on those aren't really autograph cards but that is from the 1982 top set all right so that gives us what those cards look like okay now we're gonna see you got a couple cards like that and then they flip over we do the flipsies here um, Juan Rivera outfielder for the Angels then we've got uh, Kevin Seitzer, third baseman for the Kansas City Royals. English teacher in France is, France is still here with our bot. I am sorry I need to leave you on running cooking dinner. I just finished my stream. Oh, no problem there, uh, English teacher in France. I do appreciate you watching in the background while you're cooking. That's when I usually do a lot of my uh, channel watching is when I'm doing other things, separating cards on my break uh, break area here, my separate card separation area. Uh, when I'm done here, if some of the new people are hanging out, I'll show you what I have off in my room here. As far as separating, I'm using a spare bedroom in our house for my uh, base of operations here. So Kevin Gross, outfielder for the Philadelphia Phillies. Okay, okay. So we got Danny Tartable with the Kansas City Royals. Oh, there we go. We got a first round draft pick, Ron Walden with the Los Angeles Dodgers. I don't think he made it all that great. But a first round draft pick card. Roberto Kelly with the New York Yankees, 1988 Don Russ. I always like the style of these. I believe this is, yeah, the 95 and 96 Pinnacle products. Had a sharp look design on the back. This is, uh, I believe, Mark Langston. Isn't that Mark Langston? 
Yep, Mark Langston, pitcher for the California Angels. All right. We got Willie Hatcher, Don Russ, 1986 here. Hubie Brooks with the Montreal Expos. All right. Fleer Limited Edition, 1987. Will Clark. All right. First base. Rod Scurry with the Yankees, 1987. Don Russ. Ooh, this is a. The, 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 these were uh, cool cards back in the day when they came out. Tops Finest, Steve Farr. Tops Finest, Steve Farr was a 1994 product back in the day. Then you got your Flare Flare, Jody Reed. Nice uh, photography on the top there with the dual shot, the, the action shot, and then him up to bat there getting ready to hit the ball. All right. Gates got another 95 uh, pinnacle with uh, Gates with the Oakland A's. Uh, Brent Brent Gates, okay. Marty Freeman or Marty Marvin Freeman with the Colorado Rockies. All right, Pedro Guerrero with the Los Angeles Dodgers. 88 Don Russ. It always threw me off whenever I seen these. I'm like, why they got double? Because that's their lo team logo on their shirt. And then the little emblem that they were using for the Don Russ 88 products. So you do get the double vision quite a bit when you get those from that year. Um, Tom Terrific. Tom Terrific. That, one, that card's backwards, of course. But Tom Terrific. Tom Seaver. All right, I believe this was a subset card set that they did do, and that is a terrible card that they put in here. Look how bad that card looks. Usually you don't get cards looking this bad, but I guess this one kind of slipped through the QA process for, for them. That is a terrible looking card. I don't even know if I'd really want to keep that one, except for somebody that maybe collected R.J. Reynolds. That is one terrible card I, I don't that's not even worth putting in my penny box <laughs> when i do my garage sales that is one terrible card you I don't, you guys can see the edges and the, and the creases on the card i mean that one is definitely terrible there we go we got a roberto alomar there we go roberto alomar rookie card that is not too bad. It, uh, def I definitely wouldn't send it in for grading, but it is a um, that I would consider a hit since it's a Re Roberto Alomar rated rookie card. Can add that to my Hall of Fame rookie card collection. All right, Zach Sorensen, team's best rookie with the Watertown Indians. So that's a that's a minor league card for that player there. Um, it doesn't have the minor, oh, there it is. Professional baseball logo there. That indicates that it's a minor league uh, baseball card. For those that aren't familiar with that, that's why I like to kind of point that out here. That is professional baseball. So that is what the symbols look like instead of major league baseball. That is the pro ball link. Uh, label there so that will go into my rookie separation that's for sure all right 89 flare product uh, 89 or no that's 88 isn't it no 89 flare 89 flare i was right on that one bob stanley with the boston red sox uh oh that one's definitely one of those it's not a normal size card i'll kind of match it up with a regular card you can see it's shortcut left to right but that's because this is not a regular card set. Columbia Mets, another minor league type card set. Little Falls, 1987. Steve LaRose, pitcher. All right, 1988 World Series. Sax's speed wins game four. All right, 89 Flair again. Lance Johnson, outfielder. There we go. Steve Balboni, another Seattle Mariner. <laughs> Grand Slam Card Company. Yeah, there we go. 
All right, Steve Balboni there. Larry Anderson, Astros right-handed pitcher. Chris Carpenter with the Cardinals. Chris Carpenter. Oops, there we go. Another one of those uh, uh, Bowman's Best older cards. This is a uh, same year, 1994. So they, a couple of 1994 Bowman's Best cards in here. Dave LaPointe with the White Sox. Uh, Gary Varsho, outfielder for the Cubs. Oh, there we go. That's not really a hit per se, but it is a uh, top's finest Ray Ordonez with the New York Mets. All right, from a 1996 tops. That is a uh, top's finest prod prodigy, right? Um, a lot of times people take these off, usually when they're older like this. Sometimes it may not peel off as better. It does tell you to peel it off. I've done that to some of them, and it doesn't usually damage the cards. But a lot of people do just leave that protective coating on there until maybe they want to get it, uh, possibly if they want to get it graded or something of that nature. Here's another one of those... Uh, other cards, Columbia Mets, Grand Slam Card Company right there, like uh, Mill, Mill City Wax was mentioning. Okay, so another minor leg card. All right. So Dan Pasqua with the White Sox. Dan Pasqua with the White Sox. Score 1990, everybody's, another one of everybody's favorites. So mass, so much mass production of the Score 1990 products back in the day. Um, Edgar Diaz with the Milwaukee Brewers. Bob Walk. There we go. I think Kevin's card collecting likes Bob Walk. Different ones like this, you know. How many times did he walk, I wonder. All right. He didn't walk uh, too many. All right. Did play for the Phillies, the Braves, and the Pirates back in the day. But he was a pitcher. But he was a National League pitcher, so that means he did hit the ball every once in a while. All right. Uh, Dwight Evans. There we go. That's a, a nicer-looking older card there with the Boston Red Sox. 1982 tops. 1982 tops. We'll be getting into that in our tops baseball card video series Dwight Gooden with the New York Mets 1982 Don Russ awesome year or I like my Cal Ripken Jr. from that that's his rookie year 1982 all right Keith Hernandez though and then last in the first half of the box Brian Harper with the Minnesota Twins so in that first half not too bad getting a Alberto or Roberto Alomar, sorry about that. Roberto Alomar rookie card. Let me uh, put that in a penny sleeve. And then I will throw that in here in a rookie card top loader. Put that in with my Hall of Fame rookie cards. One of these days I'll have to go through and highlight my Hall of Fame rookie cards that I do have in my collection also. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, open up our Leaf 1991 Series 1 featuring Harmon Killebrew Hall of Fame puzzle and 15 baseball cards. Look for randomly packed Gold Leaf rookie cards. Collect all 24. Would kind of be nice to get one of those rookie cards in here. These foil packs are always interesting to open because you want to kind of be, at least it's good they had the puzzle piece right there on the back of the pack as you're opening it. So let me throw that there. And these are the ones, I always thought these were like the old style, uh, how you would mount your uh, photographs in 
your photo albums back in the day with these little tabs and you'd put the corners of the cards in the little tabs in the photo albums. That's what this typeset reminded me of back in the day. Um, but here we go. We've got Tim Nearing here. Tim Nearing. All right. With the Boston Red Sox. We got Matt Young here with the Boston Red Sox. All right. Kirby Puckett. Kirby Puckett. There we go. That's a cool card to get. Kirby Puckett. Hall of Famer. All right. Uh, Jack Clark. Jack Clark. Russ Mormon. Rush Russ Mormon with the Kansas City Royals. Uh, Steve Searcy with the Detroit Tigers. Jose Canseco. Muscle Man. Jose Canseco back in the day. Let's see. This is... Um, Let's see, he did play for Oakland. Well, he played in Tacoma for a little while. But he played for Oakland. Then they had him down in the minors for 1989 and then back up. So I think he probably, what, what is it, 85 for his rookie year? He'd been playing ball for a few years right here. All right, Donnie Hill. Donnie Hill with the Angels. Mark Guthrie. Mark Guthrie here with the Twins. Jose Mesa with the Baltimore Orioles. Cool stream. Thanks there, teacher's bot. <laughs> um, Storm Davis. Storm Davis with the Kansas City Royals. Um, Ted, or not Ted, Terry Kennedy. Terry Kennedy. I think I'm trying to remember what team was he on. Oh, yeah, the San Francisco Giants there. Uh, Tommy Gregg with the Atlanta Braves. Charlie LeBrant with the Atlanta Braves. Um, and then we've got Daryl Boston with the New York Mets. And last but not least was the silver looking puzzle piece for Harmon Killebrew. Again, you would poke these three pieces out of there and you could put the whole puzzle together. Of course, that is one part of the puzzle. You can see that's the bat of the puzzle. So you would have the, the puzzle pieces on this. There would be 63. So you would have 21 different cards like this to make the complete puzzle. And it is about an 8 by 10 picture size puzzle that comes out of that for those that aren't aware of that. So then let's see here. I guess we'll go this way. Maybe this is our autograph, the checklist. <laughs> Just teasing there, guys. And gals just teasing <laughs> well so far no go with a hit yet but we will see what we find out here let me uh turn these over here all right so carlos gonzalez with the colorado rockies I believe the card number on the top that way all right, don't see anything late breaking and shattering from the side view as far as no thick cards or anything. Um, Ryan Howard with the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, Guy Giancarlo Stanton with the Miami Marlins. Nelson Cruz when he was with the Baltimore Orioles. He did a stint with the Seattle Mariners. Uh, now he's, I think, with the Minnesota Twins. So Nelson Cruz has been around the leagues for a while. Um, it looks like he started back in 05. Started with the Brewers, then went to the Rangers. Then went to the Orioles, of course. Seattle, Texas. I think he was down in Texas for a while. Bryce Harper, youngest with two opening day home runs. Bryce Harper back in the day. All right, Joe Maurer with the Minnesota Twins. Um, Coco Crisp back in the day with the Oakland Athletics. For those that remember Coco Crisp. David Price with the Tampa Bay Rays. All right, Lucas Duda with the Mets. These are all twisty, topsy-turvy cards here. 
Um, Suyoshi Nashi Nashioko with the Minnesota Twins. He's got to be a Japanese. Yep, Osaka, Japan is his hometown. All right, Oral Hershiser with the Dodgers. Oral Hershiser. All right, Greg Walker with the White Sox. Um, 87, Don Russ, Ed Whitson. Uh, 40 years at Tops Baseball, New York Mets, Mackie Sasser. Greg Jeffries, Gold Cup card with the Mets. Um, there we go. Andre Dawson. Andre Dawson, Hall of Famer. Dennis Eckersley, same thing, Hall of Famer. Darren Dalton with the Philadelphia Fillers, Phillies, 91 Fleer. Or everybody's favorite yellow cards. Makes it look like the sun shining, that's for sure. Uh, Jeff Musselman with the New York Mets. All right. Guess what? There we go, Kevin. We found our back-to-back -back cards. Gary DeSarcina. All right, with the California Angels. So there's our back-to-back -back cards that we usually get pulled out of the box. That's what a lot of people start looking for now when they open up their Fairfields is the two back-to-back -back cards. Sure would have been nice if it was like Roberto Alomar rookie cards. <laughs> that would have been a nice back-to-back -back hit. All right, 84 Don Russ. All right, Dane Eorg with the St. Louis Cardinals. I was going to say, oh, no, is it a double? Nope. Same set, though. Bob Baylor with the New York Mets. Dave Stewart with the Philadelphia Phillies, 86 Don Russ. All right, we've got uh, Juan Gonzalez. Juan Gonzalez. Wait. Dun, dun, dun. With the Texas Rangers. Um, 81 Don Russ, Keith Hernandez. Keith Hernandez. All right, another 81 Don Russ, Jim Fragosi, manager with the Angels. All right, how's everybody doing in the chat here? Coco Krispies, here we go, super short print cards. How you doing there? All right, so we did have a few people show up. We're up to nine in the stream. We might have been up to double digits. I don't remember looking down and seeing it, but we're get, we're close. Bobby Valentine with the Texas Rangers. Oh, here we go. Uh, a Topps Gold card. Uh, Mike Munoz with the Detroit Tigers. Nice looking Topps Gold card there. Here we go. Top Stadium Club. Jeff Supon. Expansion. Expansion. That's when they made the, the expansion. Uh, Arizona Diamondbacks. There we go. Is that the first year of the Diamondbacks? Kevin would know that for sure. I think so. Acquired by the draft in 1997. Never a big fan of that one. All right. And then, let's see, what do we got next here? Uh, Johnny Ruffin. Turn this one around here. With the Cincinnati Reds, 95 Ultra Flare. Okay. Then it looks like we've got some 81 and 82 Donruss. Harry Spillman with the Reds, 1981. And uh, John Henry Johnson, 1982 with the Texas Rangers. Baseball greats. Oh, there we go. There we go. Mel Ott. Mel Ott, Hall of Famer here. Nice Mel Ott older swell card from 19... 1990. It's about a 30-year-old card, but in good shape for Mel Ott, Hall of Famer. That's a cool older Hall of Famer type card. Reprint, of course, because Mel Ott played way back in the day. All right. Joe Nolan, catcher for the Cincinnati Reds. All right. Next one we got here is David Wells with the Detroit Tigers. All right. Um, Andy Hassler, 1982 Don Russ. 
Got some older 81 and 82 Don Russ in here, but not none of the better players. Uh, Travis Fryman with the Detroit Tigers. Gary Pettis with the Detroit Tigers. Two different years of cards there. 81 Don Russ again. Orioles, Dan Graham, catcher. All right. There's our uh, score, 1991, Ron Oster with the Cincinnati Reds. Oh, no, Todd Bezinger. Todd Bezinger. He's with the Seattle Mariner uh, organization. I uh, believe they have him on TV sometimes and on radio, different things like that. But Todd Bezinger, when he, back in the day when he played ball, Dave Bergman with the Detroit Tigers, 91. Bo Diaz, India, Indians catcher back in the day. Bo Diaz, another 90 score coming up here. So this was Bo Diaz. This looks like his third year card, 1981. He looks like his rookie card was 1979. All right. Gerald Perry, 1990 score. Here we go. 2018 Arizona Diamondbacks team card. Oh, there we go. Do you got that one there, Kevin? Do you got that one in your in your collection? That's a pretty neat looking card there with them all standing. And then uh with the fireworks going off there. Arizona Diamondbacks team card. Just set that aside for now. Oh, you do. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Um, Ian Desmond with the Colorado Rockies. Turn it over. There we go. Ian Desmond with the Colorado Rockies. Um, Seattle Slayers. Yeah, I've got this card. Nelson Cruz. Oh, no, that wasn't Nelson Cruz. That's, uh, they don't really say on the back there. Oh, uh, come on. What is this name? Well, they're... Both those players are, are gone, basically. They're not with the Mariners anymore. They didn't stay long. Uh, all right. Uh, Jordan, Jordan Zimmerman with the Detroit Tigers. Uh, hey, Frank. I'm in Boston. About to catch a flight to New Orleans. <laughs> Steven Matz with the New York Mets. And last but not least, Acevedo Garcia, Chicago White Sox All-Star Game when they were in Washington, D.C. in 2018. So there we go. No autograph in this box, but I'm doing pretty good in my latest round. One autograph out of two boxes so far, so if the other two Fairfields I, I have do not have an auto, I guess I'll stand strong with my one out of four. But we'll see what happens the next Fairfield box I do open up. So that was really cool. I can't think of what else to do for now. But that was our Fairfield box. We got the mill on. I know there's a couple other Hall of Famers I missed in there. I'll pull them out when I do my separation with my review process. Before I do file these away in for my uh, team bag sorts. That's what I do with all my extras. Of course, this one here, uh, I don't think I'm going to be saving this card. It is in terrible, terrible shape. You can see the, the corner on that. You can see the, all the folds and the creases. So this one is a penny card in the recycle bin. Now, somebody might yell because I just ripped up that card. But guess what? There's one less of those mass-produced cards. But I will separate my, my puzzle piece into my puzzle piece box. That gets separated there along with uh, checklists. I think I had one or two checklists in here that I remember seeing. They'll go in my checklist box, my puzzle box. So down the road, I can try and put the puzzle sets together and see who knows, maybe even sell them on eBay. So for those that are interested, I do plenty of things on my channel, plenty of things on my channel, lots of content to produce. It looks like probably the other one's left. Uh, Kevin's car collecting is here. Uh, I did. Very good box. Um, yeah, I haven't watched the rest of that Super Short Print. I was very satisfied. My previous experiences with hobby boxes have not been good. 
Well, those that watched my hobby box opening when I did it, I was well pleased with what I pulled out of my hobby box. But yeah, sometimes you might not get a good hobby box. I know that does happen also. But I do appreciate everybody that's been here. Frank's Card Corner wasn't there. A Topps Heritage based on the 1954 Topps design. I can't remember for sure. There might have been. I'd have to think on that one. But I do appreciate everybody that hopped in here. It looks like Lucky Lucky hopped in here. Uh, Lucky Lucky was here. Hunter Buescher was here. Super short print cards, Kevin's card collecting, and more. Let me uh, be easier to go here, like right there. Boom. So, uh, Frank's card corner still hanging in here. Uh, Hatstro's McGee, he's getting ready to catch his flight to New Orleans. Uh, Hunter Buescher, Kevin's card collecting, and more. Lucky, lucky, and super short print cards. Looks like all my other participants have left does show I have six people left um, and super short print cards is in in the house still so I do appreciate everybody that was here for the live stream today I know there's a couple things going on Kevin do you know if uh, if Ethan's going live with another stream don't forget the jumbo uh, break tonight at, at 10 central yes that's 8 8 p.m. for us right Kevin Central time, yeah, let's see, East, Central, Mountain, and Pacific. So yeah, you're two hours, so that'll be 8 p.m. my time. I hope we do pull some fire in there. I'm anxious to find out what teams I get in my, in my four, let's see. I think I bought the last four boxes, right? Or four spots. So I guess I get four teams, okay? Now on those teams, does that go with the team that they're pictured on the card for some of the short prints and different ones like that. So like if a, if I have the Baltimore Orioles and I get the uh, uh, the Baltimore Orioles, that means if a Cal Ripken Jr. shows up, I get the Cal Ripken Jr. Similar to that. Yeah, yeah, 8 o'clock West time. No problem. Ethan is going live, not going live today. I'll be doing my stream closer to 3 or 4 and then SSP at 8 o'clock. Uh, Donald Blomdahl, I have the same time as Super Short Print Card Breaks. Okay, no problem. No problem. Yes, it is the team on the card. All right, thanks there. Just wanted to make sure. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So so my best deal would be, of course, to get uh, uh, the, the Seattle Mariners, the Cincinnati Reds, the Baltimore Orioles. Then I don't care what my fourth team is. The reason I say Cincinnati Reds is sometimes Ken Griffey Jr. might be on a Cincinnati Red card. But usually when they do his uh, his reprint cards, it's usually Seattle Mariners. I, I have seen a few, but not as many, because he didn't do as many years there. Uh, but that's that's just kind of cool to, to kind of know what team you need to look out for and things like that. But just want to scooch these over out of the way because I'm going to get ready to turn the camera around before I do sign off here. We are at about an hour and 15 minutes, but I didn't want this stream to be super long today. I have a lot of things to work on and get done today, but I'm going to turn my camera around so you guys can see me and know that I really do exist. Not that you guys don't know I exist, but just so you're aware that I do exist. Let me, uh, there. All right. So this is Don Blombow Hall of Fame Veteran Sports Cards and Collectibles. I still am here. Don't mind hanging out, chatting for a minute in the channel here. Kevin says, I just want the Padres and Diamondbacks, but you already knew that. <laughs> That's okay. So, uh, SSP card breaks, you're going to just do a randomizer to choose the teams, right? You're going to have the list, list of the people in the break and then pew, 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 do a randomizer. Uh, yes, trading is accepted. Well, that's cool. There will be there will be trading, to, trading right? That's fine. Um, so that is cool. Then you have to just adjust who gets what. So, um, but yeah. So just for, I don't think there's anybody new in the channel. 
but I'll just give you a, a quick picture here at an angle so that you can't see none of the addresses. Wait, actually, let me just do it this way. No, that actually that top one is fine. Um, <clears throat> but over here on my uh, separation area, let me turn the camera around real quick. You can see my stack of mail packages that are there. That'll be for my family mail call tomorrow. Okay, I'll be opening that. That bottom big box, I don't know what, what it is for sure, but I do know that's uh, somebody from Facebook that said they'd sent me something that could be opened on the channel. So we'll see what that is when I do get that one. So uh, that's my biggest box so far. And I may have a couple more packages coming in. We'll see what comes in the mail today to see what gets added into my family mail call uh, Saturday. I'll do my family mail call Saturday because that'll be like the last uh, last day before my weekend when I do my live stream. So that's why I switched my family mail call Saturdays. That's what I'll call them from now on. So... Um, Donald, do you know if you're doing a video on Sunday or Monday? Most likely not this Sunday that I'm aware of. Monday, there might be a possibility. It just depends on what's going on and what my wife might have planned for that day. But let me tip this a little bit more so you can see a little bit of the shirt. All right. There we go. This was the, the Hall of Fame or ba uh, National Baseball Hall of Fame 2016 inductees and of course that's what's on my hat here so the hat and the t-shirt does match up uh, it does look make me look huge when I'm leaning back like this so uh, I'm not really that fat it's just it is a tight shirt because it's a medium I don't usually wear a medium I'm not quite that skinny yet but I'm working on it getting rid of a little bit of a, a food belly I do like to eat I do have a little food belly here. But other than that, um, yes, we'll be looking forward to uh, Kevin's live stream. He hasn't done a live stream in quite a while, so I do want to be there. Um, so other than that, I can't think of anything else to really chit-chat about. Unless somebody has any questions out there. Um Super Short Print Car Break says, I will have some mail to open on stream tonight as well. Okay. I'm sure Kevin probably has a package or two that he probably needs to open too that I'm aware of unless he's recorded some and just haven't posted them up yet. I don't know. But uh, other than that, I'm going to get ready to wrap things up today. Well, that's right. Yeah, there's nobody here, so I did leave the door open. You can kind of see in my hallway back behind me here. Um, but yeah, so other than that, we have about five people left in the stream. I'm going to get ready to close things up here. Um, Taylor Motter was the guy that you had, that you have, that you couldn't think of the name of the card. Oh, okay. Tyler Motter. Okay. So other than that, let me see anything else that people are talking. So Kevin, you probably sharing some, so are you, are you doing one or two Fairfield boxes like you sometimes do? Or uh, I guess it just depends on how things go. I know you'll definitely be want to, wanting to finish up before uh, before uh, Super Short Print Card goes uh, to his live at 8 p.m. So uh, looking forward to a fun night. Yeah, we'll hang out with Kevin. We'll hang out with Super Short Print Card Breaks. Um, I might be doing that while I'm doing some work for the church. I have to finish up. I promised the church that I would have all their giving statements done by this Sunday. So I've got about, I think it's less than 10 more to, to create and get typed into the computer so I can give them their giving statements for their taxes. Um, but yeah, other than that, I can't think of anything else to go over at the moment. Uh, I do have to make one more one more errand today, go out and check a couple of mailboxes, the church mail and then a business mail um, that I where I get some of my business mail. So other than that, uh, did, did you watch Eric Jabs' video yesterday? 
Um, I watched a couple of his recently. I'm trying to think. His one yesterday, I think he opened up. I, I caught the past is alive yesterday, and that was a pretty cool, interesting type video. Um, it's always nice to see uh, different things like that. I have a, a couple of my people on Facebook do watch um, videos of uh, Eric and John Japs. I think I got some people interested by my friends on Facebook following me and watching my videos and stuff. Um, they've actually started, because I've mentioned it plenty of times and they've asked questions in regards to them. So I told them to just kind of check out their channels. But John does do the, the, the weird and goofy and different kind of stuff, which is uh, kind of interesting at times. And that's where uh, some of my friends on Facebook that do send me oddball type stuff, they they like to see my reaction when I get ready to try and open up something on the channel that I haven't, uh, that I'm not familiar with. Um, one of these days I'll go through one of my early streams I did, which I should have waited and just uh, done that when I had more people watching and more content. But I got to figure out if there's a way to uh, repost. Uh, content that you've had in the past so that people can get more views on it uh, from an older video or probably I just need to put it in to highlight it if I want to highlight a video like uh, put it on a specific watch list or something of better streams or oddball type stuff back in the day Eric Jabs was looking for that bad word card oh yeah the Billy Ripken and the 89 Flare that's right no I did not watch that did he find it Hunter? Did he find one of those or probably not? I mean, they are hard to find when you open up the 89 Fleer, but of course you can get some Hall of Fame rookie cards in there. So that is one thing you can do on that channel, that's for sure. Uh, as he does open up different kind of products still. Uh, sometimes he'll find something out in his garage that he didn't realize it was there for a long time and he'll just open it because it's something oddballish to open. So that is kind of nice and cute when he does do something like that different. So um, I'm probably going to go to about the uh, 1 hour and 25 minute mark. We're coming up on that here soon. Then I'm going to get ready to have some uh, a, oops, a lunch break. I've got a little hiccup from taking that sip of water. But I wanted to clear my throat. So as far as I remember, he did not find one. Good, because you don't want to show that online on your live stream. But some people probably would. But because uh, it does have a bad word on the on the nub of the the bat. And the way he's holding it, you can definitely see it. That's why I think it was uh, purposely taken. But uh, they did have to fix that. And some, they, uh, they, they blotted it out. On the corrected card so that's why they did not have a full run with all the cards but some of them did make it out into the system out into the the public so that's why it's talked about a lot hey Don I need some more old cards laugh out loud I will send you an email 81 tops 81 tops um, I can see what I have on that one I can try and try and see what I can locate you're working on an 81 top set are you Wow I can give it a whirl. I'll give it a whirl. Won't guarantee, but we'll, I'll see. I'll see what I have. I can look look through some. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that one, but yeah, go ahead and send me a list. I need some team cards. Okay, okay. I can see what I can find, or if not, I have my. Uh, I have a friend in Seattle that can can try and locate some stuff for me also. But we'll see. We'll see what we can find. How's that sound? always using uh, good teamwork and and contacts when you're trying to complete a set um, I have the complete 81 top set I have some team cards that have pen marks oh, okay so you want to get a better card in the set to make it more complete and more much more better looking I understand I do that sometimes on some of my sets that I work on trying to complete myself just like that one just like the card here that's why if, if, if somebody was trying to complete the, the um, I think this one that I ripped up of uh, R.J. Reynolds was, uh, 
You have a 1988 tops here, or score. 1988. See, see, I did rip it up because it. This card was in such bad shape. That's why I just. Uh, that goes to the recycle bin. It's not even worth saving. R.J. Reynolds. Sounds like a tobacco company. Anyway, I was nine years old when I built it. There you go. All right. So let's see. See, I don't mind hanging out and chatting with you guys. Um, matter of fact, now that we've gone over, let's go to the hour and a half mark. We can hang out for another couple minutes and just chit chat in the channel. But yeah, just, just send me an email there, Frank, or, uh, text me the information either way. And I will see what I can find for you. Uh, teacher's bot is still here. Oh, okay. English teacher in France is still here. <laughs> I did not know you were still here there. Uh, English teacher in France. That's a, She's a, a Filipina that's in France and is an English teacher. So that is cool. Thanks that you're still hanging out and your bot is watching me in the background. Lucky, lucky Frank, I used to write on some of my cards when I was a kid too. Could kick myself now, but at least I still have them. Oh man, that's cool. So you have some cards that you wrote on there, Lucky Lucky, and you still have the cards in your collection. Um, I left you on while cooking. Why, thank you there. Um, I don't know her first name, but she's English teacher. English teacher in France. That's, what I, that's all I know of her. English teacher in France. Go ahead and check out her channel, everybody. And uh, uh, she is monetized already. Um, but it's just... I, I appreciate you stopping by and visiting us. We do a little bit different stream than you're used to. But uh, this is my card collecting. I collect baseball cards and do a lot of baseball card history on my channel. So I guess you could say I am a history teacher for the baseball card collectors. That's what I've been known as. Some people, if you're still watching there, uh, English teacher in France. Um, some people call me the Mr. Rogers of baseball card collecting. I've been given that label by uh, one or two different people in my channel. Um, but yeah, yeah, it looks interesting, yes. But then I do record, I pre-record my, uh, my Bible reading content. So that posts up every day at 5 a.m. So every day this year, there will be a post go up. Uh, I think once or twice I've had it where I had the settings wrong and it didn't post up right. So I had to fix it and then post it up right away. But I pre-record my Bible reading, and yes, I only saw your stream reading the words of God. Yes, that is uh, one of my series that I do. Uh, that's why when I did become, uh, not monetized, but when I got my thousand subscribers, I changed my name from Donald Blomdahl Hall of Fame Veteran Sports Cards and Collecting to uh, Donald Blomdahl By God's Grace. Because I give God all the glory for allowing me to get the point in my channel that I am right now. And so that's why I wanted to add that series in. I do have the, the complete book of Psalms and Proverbs on playlists in my channel. And then when I finish this year, I will have a playlist for every book in the Bible. Um, so are you actually a history teacher? Um, no, not really. Um, you'd have to watch some of my content to see back in the day, but um, I I was in the United States Navy for 20 years, so I'm retired from the United States Navy, and then I worked for the United States Postal Service for 20 years, and then I retired from the post office, so I am retired now, and this is my job in retirement. I am having fun on YouTube, doing what I love and like to do. Um, and that's sharing God's word is what I love to do. And what I like to do is my baseball card collecting and, and uh, different things like that. But yeah, some of the older videos that you'll see on my channel um, was from when me and my wife went on a missions trip uh, to the Philippines quite a few years back. And we visited different missionaries down in Mindanao and Samar and Leyte and... Uh, uh, in Manila and then down in Subic Bay so that's where a lot of my older YouTube video content is was when me and my wife went on a mission trip 
And then other different videos that I've posted up is just different video content that I've done through the years and just add them up. In my case, I can overcome homesick talking to people and, friend, and friends. Exactly. Exactly. It helps. YouTube is a wonderful tool tool to keep in touch with people that we've met through the years. Um, that's why I like uh, Facebook also. Yes, I saw the one in Subic. There you go. Yeah, so there is some down in, when well, we were down in Bukidnon, down in uh, uh, North Central, uh, I'm having a, one of those senior moments now. Uh, down the, the Southern Big Island down there. <laughs> Of course, you don't want to go south down there because there's a big Muslim presence. But yeah, so in in there, so, but yeah, I, I I enjoy doing all the content that I do have in the channel. So at least uh, I see she is paying attention a little bit more. Homesick talking about uh, it's a great feeling on YouTube. Yes, you you have people that are interested in what you do and the content that you create on your channel. That's why I have like two main venues, my Bible reading and then my uh, my baseball cards. Uh, oh, my cousin is married to a Muslim. Mindanao. Mindanao. That's what I was talking about. So we've gone as far as northern Mindanao and north central Mindanao in an area called Bukidnon. Um, if you're familiar with that island, that big island down, down south there, Mindanao. And then Samar, southeastern Samar, and then Takloban. We've been to Takloban. That's where General MacArthur landed. Um, and I was able to see the area where they do have his uh, his landing, where he landed in the Philippines and said, you know, I, I will return. <laughs> we will return. All right. And then uh, our next big trip, we go to the Philippines uh, probably the end of this year when we go to the Philippines for Christmas time. Um, we might go to uh, Cebu. We are thinking about looking to maybe uh, buying a or building a house in Cebu. Uh, I commend. Uh, I commented some suggestions that you could do for uh, player biography. Why, well, thanks there, Hunter. I'll look into that and add that to my list, most likely. So, is your wife in Penice now? Oh no, she works. My wife works. Oh, no, that's no problem. Don't say you're sorry. So is your wife in the Philippines now? No, she she is here with me. We live in Arlington, Washington, which is north of Seattle, Washington. Um, and no, she is not. She's not from Cebu. She's from Cavite. Cavite, San Roque. San Roque, Cavite City in the Philippines. Okay. So she is from the Philippines in that area. But we... Uh, she that's where most of her family does live but we've just uh, traveled through the Philippines through the different islands and we kind of like the Cebu area um, but we're, we're just looking around we when we're staying in uh, the Philippines we'll probably stay at my my wife's sister's house in uh, Cavite so uh, yeah I remember you said she was from Cavite no, no problem Oh, you are from Cebu. Oh, okay, yeah. We we know some missionaries there in Cebu. And then we have a family in our church. They're looking to retire in the Philippines in the Cebu area. Um, Donald Blomdahl, where are you from originally? Um, originally, I am from... Uh, I was born in the state of Rhode Island, up in the New England parts of the United States. But I grew up as a kid in New Jersey until I graduated from high school. Have you visited Camotes? No, I'm not familiar with Camotes, but I've heard the name before. I have not visited that area. Is that the area in uh, Cebu that you're from? Most likely. This is nice to be able to finally interact with you. Um, again, I don't have many people on here. I have a few people on my stream. I'm excited when I get double digits when people are watching me. Uh, so as you can see, I don't have a lot of subscribers. I have just over a thousand and I've maintained my subscribership level. Um, I, I am probably to subscribe to probably 15 to 1800 channels. So I do get all those alerts. Um, 
but that's just to keep my subscriptions going on their channels. Eventually they might join with me. I was born in St. Louis, Missouri, been a Cardinals fan and a Ken Griffey Jr. fan all my life. That's cool there, uh, Hunter. If you put Ken Griffey Jr. in there, he's already on my list. But uh, one of these days, I'm going to have to do Ken Griffey Jr.'s biography. It'll probably be a rather larger one, though. Uh, yes, it isn't easy to find genuine ones. Yes. So, but I really do appreciate everybody that is here. And it's almost 12 noon here. I do got to eat lunch before it gets too late. Um, but yeah. So this was fun. I do appreciate uh, chatting in the channel. That's what we're here for. Make sure uh, Teacher's Bot, uh, when you do look her up, make sure you look her up as uh, uh, English Teacher in France. That is her page name, English Teacher in France. She's just hanging out here using her Teacher's Bot, maybe as a disguise. I don't know for sure. But um, that's perfectly fine. I know she said she's cooking, probably cooking dinner for her husband when he gets home from his business. I believe he has a pub or a coffee house or something like that. I think it's a, it's probably a pub from what I remember her talking about earlier. I remember uh, the other day when I was watching her live stream, she was walking home and uh, had walked past her husband's pub. Instead of stopping in, probably because she was doing a live stream. But I know then also that her battery was dying and her backup battery was not working. Um, uh, great to have heard more about you and your contents. Uh, he has a bar cocktail. Okay, so a bar or a, a pub. Um, but that's, that's, that's really nice. So I'm glad you stopped by and visited us for a little while. Do appreciate you being here. We only I'll only have a few people left, so I'm gonna get ready to say my goodbye. This is how I do my sign-offs on my channel. This is Don Blomdahl, Hall of Fame veteran, sports cards and collectibles. Donald Blomdahl, by God's grace, signing off for today. And you guys have a uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, have a good afternoon, everyone. You too, Lucky Lucky. I appreciate your support in the channel and you being here when you can for my live streams but we will get ready to say goodbye and I really do appreciate the camaraderie we have in the channels make sure you visit everybody else's channels I don't know if you can go to teachers bot and actually give us subscription but I'm gonna check that in just a minute here but uh, English teacher in France is her channel name so uh, just go ahead and pay her a visit and then uh, we will see you guys tomorrow for my family uh, mail call opening where I'll open up different mail that I've got from my different channel members and people that visit me on the channel and ch uh, send me content to open up. So without further ado, I'm going to say goodbye. You guys have a great and wonderful day and I hope you look forward to having a great weekend. All right. Bye for now. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye now.